I'm cutting these pieces here for the stiffeners for the wing skin and the fuel tank cover. So I cut out a piece off the end of a sheet of 5052 and it didn't cut all that well with my router. But I'm cutting the strips on the table saw and that's working pretty good. I put a piece of wood on here and then ran the blade up into it so it's just through a little bit and I've got pretty much a zero clearance insert. And that seems to be doing pretty good to cut through this. Blanks. Here's one that I've done the first set of bends on. So I've done a half inch bend on each side. And here's one that I've done the complete bends on. So it has both the half inch bend and the you know, included bend on the inside. Which I'll show you how to do on this Harbor Freight Cheapo Bender. Which isn't really set up to be able to do those inside corners. And then this one I've bent to shape. And so it fits. I haven't cut it to length yet but it fits the wing skin profile. So like I said, this sheet's about three inches wide, which is close enough, I'm sure. I scaled that off the print, and I just take my half inch wide rule, set it up here, and make some marks at half an inch. I do that on both sides. Or both ends, I should say. That's just my bend marks. So now I'll take it over to the bender. So this is my Harbor Freight 30 inch bender. And I don't remember what these cost, but I think they're in the about $50 range. I did make some modifications to it. And this is also the bender I used for all my... Uh, stiffener angles and things of that nature and I did bend some of the steel parts for the uh, wing steel out of, with it but it's not the best for that and I did mess it up a little bit and had to do a repair but one of the things I did is it comes with clamps I don't even know if the clamps come but you're supposed to clamp this bar down so I drilled it and tapped it for some bolts instead so that I can easily clamp down it also comes with a really, really rough finish. And so you will mar the heck out of the aluminum if you just use it right out of the box. I radius the nose on the clamp bar and I took as much, um, well I cleaned it up as much as I could and it's still not good enough for this kind of sheet metal work. So what I do is, so this comes with uh, plastic on one side. So that'll protect it. And then I use contact paper, shelf paper, whatever you want to call it. And this piece I've used several times. I'll use it on all eight of these that I need to make. Right, for the two wings, you need two on each gas tank cover, two on each top wing skin. <clears throat> and I just put that on there, and it really protects it well. And then I don't have any marks to take out. The other thing is, since I've already transferred the marks for the inside bends, they're, they're already there for me. I don't have to remark it if you put it on pretty accurately. But, but they're basically in an inch. But we're going to do this side first. And I'm going to take and just lift this bar up a little bit. And slide this guy up to the marks. So it's up to the marks. I'm going to tighten these screws down. 
One other thing with this bender, where you place this bar affects your bend radius quite a bit. And so I have this hold down about an eighth inch back from where it actually, the two plates meet and it would bend at. And that's given me a really good radius. I've never had a problem with cracking doing that. And I've, like I said, I've bent everything with this. So then I use an angle finder. And I put it on here and then I can tell how far to bend it. The bends on the drawing appear to be about 30 degrees from putting my protractor on it. I take, I, it takes me about a 40 degree bend to, to come out with a 30 degree on a final product. And that makes up for the slack spring back and all those kind of things. So I just bend it up to 40 degrees and there it is. And you can see the angle finder, of course I can't, but we're gonna go to right there, 40 degrees. All right, so now you're saying that this kind of bender, because this table does not go below the horizontal plane, how I'm gonna get in there and bend these other angles. So what I came up with was just a little bit of jury rigging. So I have some plates, or some bars here. These are half inch. I'm just going to tape this one here so it won't go anywhere. And I'm going to set this one here. And then I'm going to set this I have some longer bolts for the hold down. Okay, so I want this bar out here. I'm going to line the sheet up on its mark, which is right there. I'm going to bring this bar out just to the front face. And just make sure it's right there. So that's pretty good. Same thing on this end. Get this where it's supposed to be. Just make sure the the bent bar I put underneath there is right on the edge. All right, so I got those lined up pretty close. I'm just gonna slide this piece of half inch wood underneath here, and this is what's actually gonna bend it. Make sure I'm on my marks. Right there. Down here, do the same thing on this end. Right there. Just check that. So that all looks good. All right, it's clamped down. So, guess what angle we're gonna go to? 40 degrees. Because we've inverted it, if we want it to come out the same, so that we have um, the top face and that foot on the same plane, we need to do the same angle. So here we go. That's 40 degrees. I'll turn around to the other side. All right, 40 degrees again. Oops, this angle finder's had a hard life. Put our half inch bar or uh, 
piece of wood in there. So there's the profile. And now this is ready to go and we're gonna bend it to fit the top skin. Now, if this was the bottom skin, all we need to do is make sure it's flat, but I'm gonna do the top skin next. All right, so now I'm gonna bend this to fit the profile of the ribs because this is gonna go on the top skins in the fuel tank bay. So what I've got here is the form blocks that I use to support the wing skin while I fit the skin for the fuel tank bay. And uh, they're the original form blocks, they've just been cut down a little in length so that they just fit in between the false spar and the main spar. So I took it and I put a little block on the end with a slot in it. I'm gonna put it in this vise. Then I'm gonna take this and put it in here in that slot, put a clamp on it and heat it up and bend it to that shape. So the first thing I gotta do is get rid of all the film on it because it's gonna get hot and melt all that. All right, film removed, ready to go. Goes with the feet up. So that that's gonna be the outside. We're gonna rivet through there. So anyhow, it's ready to go here. I'm gonna take this big clamp here I got and I'm going to put a little tension on it. I take my propane torch. And just slowly heat this. I'm going to just work the clamp down as it gets hot. So there, it's all the way down to the form. So now we've really got to heat it up to get rid of any memory it has of its old shape. And I kind of find that it's at the right temperature when you can kind of smell the wood burning a little bit. And I, I don't know if you've noticed the form. I've done this a few times on it, and it's not really charred underneath. So it's not getting hot enough to char the wood, but you'll just kind of smell that wood smell. All right, so I think that's good enough. I'll turn it off, let it cool, clamped in place, and then take it out of the form and it, see if it's held its shape. If it hasn't, then I'll just heat it up and do it again. So this is all cool now, so I can undo the clamp. And as you can see, it's taken on a nice bend that matches the rib. So this is a little long, I haven't cut it to length yet, so I can't really put it in the fuel tank bay. But if I put it in here up against where it's gonna go kind of thing, it follows the skin really nicely. So there's the two upper skin stiffeners just set in place. I cut them to the length and they, uh, they look good. So next up I would uh, drill them and counter bore them and get, get them all ready to be riveted in. So there's the fuel tank bay stiffeners installed and uh, they don't really need to be primer because they're 50-52 which has great corrosion resistance. So that's it for them.